Ebenezer family family and friends it is so good to uh, be back with you connecting on this virtual connection we will not be able to respond to your chats today but please feel free to uh, put your chats in we just thank the Lord for technology that we can connect and continue to grow together as we uh, get back into Bible study again just want to lift up uh, some prayer requests uh, just our political state uh, still want to lift up uh, Ukraine war and uh, Russian war that's going on and also just want to uh, pray for our bereaved families as we've had a flurry of uh, people going to see uh, Jesus, which yes. is good news on their behalf, but it does leave uh, some longing and uh, depression on the side of others that are missing their loved ones. So we just want to pray that they be encouraged. And finally, uh, those who are going through procedures and hospitals coming out, that recovering process. Uh, in I said finally, 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 <laughs> uh, our kids that are transitioning back to school, uh, whatever age levels they are, uh, the staff, teachers, uh, those that are involved in that whole process, want to lift them up too. So Bianca, good to have you today. Thank you. Uh, would you lift us in prayer? Let's pray. Lord, we praise you and thank you for this day and all the wonderful blessings that you've given to us, Lord. We thank you most importantly for salvation, for the right to have a real relationship with you through your son, Jesus Christ, Lord. We pray that you would encourage the saints, that you would embolden and empower your church through the Holy Spirit, Lord, that we would boldly proclaim your word, the gospel, to everyone we meet, Father, to let them know that there is a Savior and his name is Jesus. Lord, help us not to take for granted the wonderful gift that you have given. Lord, we lift up our world situation. Lord, there's still a war with Ukraine. There are still things that are happening. Um, COVID is still out there, Lord, and, and some places are spreading, Lord. Um, wars and rumors of wars, um, weather patterns that are strange and different. But Lord, your word said that the end days would be like this. So I pray that you would um, help us as a church body to reach out to others, Father, not only with the gospel, but with um, physical needs, Lord. A place in your word talks about if we um, tell our brothers and sisters to be warm and fed, but we don't do anything to help with that, Lord, then we're hypocrites. Help us not to be hypocrites. Help us to be doers of your word and not hearers only. Lord, we lift up the bereaved families, Lord. So many in our church family have lost loved ones recently. We pray that you would comfort their hearts and minds Lord, help us to reach out to them, Father, and to help encourage them to know that their loved ones are with you, Father, if they're saved, that we are not, we do not mourn like those who have no hope, Lord, but we can know that if we believe in your son, Jesus, that we can see our loved ones again. I pray that not only for the recent deaths in our church family, but those who have lost loved ones, in, are, it's still hurting. The pain is still there. I pray that you would comfort their hearts. Please continue to heal those who have recently had surgeries and have come out of the hospital, Lord. Those who are still in the hospital and recuperating, we pray your healing power. We pray for good doctors and nurses that um, would uh, minister to their needs, Lord. And we thank you for their caregivers, that you would encourage and strengthen them as well. We lift up our school children, Father, as most of them are back at school, Lord. I pray that they have a wonderful school year full of your grace and your mercy and your power, Lord. And I pray that not only for students, but for teachers and administrators and cafeteria workers and bus drivers and custodians and secretaries and all those who make school possible, Lord. And I pray that not only for um, K through 12 and preschool, but also into college and higher education, Lord, that they would all be able to walk um, in the calling that you have called them to, even while they're in the classroom. And finally, we lift up this Bible study that your word would go forth with with anointing and power. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Our Bible reading for today is one chapter. You're like, yes, yes, Ooh. one chapter. Jeremiah chapter 51. That's Jeremiah chapter 51. And we have a saying by Loyola today. In times of dryness and desolation, we must be patient and wait with resignation the return of consolation, putting our trust in the goodness of God. 
we must animate ourselves by the thought that God is always with us, that He only allows this trial for our greater good, and that we have not necessarily lost His grace because we have lost the taste and feeling of it. Amen. Uh, it's a walk of faith, and so I encourage you just to say amen. That is a, a good saying for all of us to know that the Lord truly will never, ever leave us or forsake us. Well, we're back on the journey uh, with Abraham, with Isaac, you can see on the backdrop uh, today, getting back in, looking for that bride for Isaac, that mm -hmm. bride for Isaac. Uh, it has been a walk of faith for uh, the servant of Abraham to find this bride, and mm -hmm. we're going to transition just a little review from last time, Genesis 24, 15. It says, and it happened before he had finished speaking that behold, Rebekah, who was born to Bethuel, son of Milcah, the wife of Nahor, Abraham's brother, came out with her pitcher on her shoulder. Now, I love this uh, part because now we begin to get into fruition, um, the fulfillment of the prayer of the servant of Abraham. He asked for details, and in those details, guess what? Uh, Rebecca shows up. We talked about the characteristics of her on last time. Remember how she uh, would uh, make sure that the camels uh, had plenty of drink, which was a astronomical <laughs> job that she had to go through. And so her character of niceness, submissiveness, servanthood is there, which is going to be a prerequisite uh, for the bride, for Isaac, considering that we're talking about the genealogy of Jesus Christ. Let's look at this Genesis 24 and 16. Now the young woman was very beautiful to behold, a virgin. No man had known her. And she went down to the well, filled her pitcher, and came up. So again, we're checking off those boxes now. A beautiful mm -hmm. young lady, a strong young lady, uh, just vibrant. And um, God knows how to work it out. Somebody say, won't he do it? If you're on the chat, say, won't he do it? If you're just sitting, lunch break, whatever, just say, won't he do it? Look at Genesis 24, 17. And the servant ran to meet her and said, please let me drink a little water from your pitcher. And so now we're just kind of going through um, just how God is setting this up. And the servant, again, I cannot say enough about his faith that he has learned from Abraham and Abraham has learned from God. It reminds me of that scripture that Paul the Apostle says, uh, follow me as I follow Christ. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is a wonderful example here. As we look at Genesis 24, 18. So she said, drink my Lord. Then she quickly let her pitcher down to her hand and gave him a drink. So Bianca, just a little bit, we talked about the characteristics of Rebecca on last time. But what do we see in, he asked for a drink, and this, this thought quickly, she quickly did. What can we learn about uh, who she is? Um, that she didn't hesitate. She didn't go, oh, I don't know, and I don't know you. She, there was no hesitancy about her at all. She was like, oh, yeah, sure. So just her willingness to help even strangers. I mean, you know, we'll, you know some people don't even help their family, but for her willingness to be able to help strangers um, because he just asked for a drink of water and she was like, sure, that's no problem. So her willingness to help, her ability to help, you know, she wasn't like, oh, that's going to be hard, but I'll do it. Um, but as you said, that she was strong and able to help to give him a drink. Um, let's think about New Testament. You know, I said some of us has, have entertained angels and I think this gift of hospitality and reaching out to strangers is becoming a loss in our society. And I get it. Don't go out and quote me, quote the <laughs> scriptures. You're like, Pastor, I ain't talking to no stranger. I'm not giving nobody no stranger. I don't know why. I get it. I understand. I, I think we do have to have discernment. We have to be led of the Lord. But I think more than not, there are some strangers that you may cross paths with today, uh, this week, uh, that you need to reach out to, um, that you need to show love to. Um, it could be uh, simply as you go out to a restaurant. Many of us go to restaurants and you have your uh, person that's there, a waiter, waitress that's uh, attending to you. They're a stranger to you, per se, you know, uh, and they're bringing their food. Uh, ask their name, you know, maybe strike up a little bit of conversation. They still got other tables to do. <laughs> but, um, you know, that could be a time that you're reaching out uh, to a stranger in a 
a contained area. Uh, but I, I think this is beautiful to see the attitude of Rebecca. This mm -hmm. Genesis 24, 19 says, And when she had finished giving him a drink, she said, I will draw water for your camels also until they have finished drinking. So again, we've got this whole picture. We talked about this prayer, learning about um, the characteristics of Rebecca, uh, the camels. We went through a whole bunch of information on this. Mm -hmm. Look at this Genesis 24 and 20. Then she quickly emptied her pitcher into the trough, ran back to the well to draw water, and drew for all his camels. So uh, the biggest thing that I want to bring out of this, she is a healthy lady. <laughs> uh, we talked about all these camels. I gave you the background of that in um, previous time, the history of it. But uh, she is healthy. She's running. She's excited. Uh, I mean, this is a lot of work. And it just shows how God can use us. And don't never take your health for granted. Mm -hmm. uh, someone else may not have the health that you have. So use that. Use that to bless other people. And we see this in Rebecca. Mm. It says a single camel can hold up to 25 gallons. And he had 10 of them. Serving <laughs> them was a great task. She filled them all. So just going over that, I wanted to get that in your mind. Let's look at this Genesis 24 and 21. And the man, wondering at her, remained silent so as to know whether the Lord had made his journey prosperous or not. So here it is again. We witnessed the prayer, the details of the prayer. Now we're seeing the fruition, the answering of the prayer. But he's waiting. Um, there, there is a part when we see God move that we, we it's okay to make sure. It's okay mm -hmm. to be patient because if it's God, it's God, right? He's not going to take it back from us. And I, I think so many times we, we buy into the thought, you know, we got to move right now. You know, if we don't move right now, we're going to miss it. No, I think that's more the thought of the enemy pressing on us. How many bad decisions have you made uh, just in the heat of the moment? Mm -hmm. You know, buy this, da, 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 buy this. You got to do it now because you're not going to get the deal later. God's not a deal maker like that. What God says is going to happen. So he just waits and rests. He doesn't want to move too quickly. I have a saying, and this is just me, that I feel like God is a slow God. Um, he's a Jamaican God. You know, it's just like he just takes his time. Why? Because he's a God of the past and the future. He knows all of this is, and he does not have to rush. We don't really see Jesus rushing in his ministry. Think about it. Uh, we, we just see him as an on-time God. Uh, more than not, he was considered late. Remember Lazarus? Uh, he had passed mm -hmm. away, and uh, Martha Mary, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But he was right on time. Death was not a deadline for him. That's good. I got to preach that. <laughs> Death was not a deadline. Mm -hmm. uh, let's look at this Genesis 24 and 22. So it was, when the camels had finished drinking, that the man took a golden nose ring weighing half a shekel and two bracelets for her wrists weighing ten shekels of gold, and said, Whose daughter are you? Tell me, please. Is there room in your father's house for us to lodge? Now, you got to get the context. Uh, this is not as creepy as it sounds. You know, it's like, you know, like the guy starts taking out stuff, you know, a gold uh, no, this is just a hospitality. This is a, a thank you. Um, mm -hmm. camels. Uh, yeah, is it for the camel? Maybe even a tip <laughs> thought. You know, you just want to tip. You want to bless somebody. So it's not, it's not in a creepy way. Um, in their day, they were intense on hospitality. We just see uh, this young lady, Rebecca, just really superseding this. And also this servant is just trying to figure out. He has this entourage of camels. He has all of these things. Because later we're going to talk about a dowry. A dowry would be paid for that bride. And his express um, thought pattern in prayer was to find a bride for Isaac. Mm -hmm. I do find it interesting. B, let's talk, Just it just popped in my mind. Why don't you think Abraham did not allow Isaac to come with them? Why was this a journey that this servant had to take by himself? It would seem like... If Isaac would have been there, he could have like, yeah, that's the one. You know, or I like her. You know, like a Samson, you know, get me that one over there. What, what are some thoughts? It's not expressly talked about in Scripture, but what are some thoughts? Um, well, I think there are two reasons that I would think that Isaac didn't come. Number one, I think the whole reason Abraham wanted to get Isaac a wife is because he was mourning the loss of his mom. 
remember um, the, the previous chapter, Sarah had just died. And so I think um, Isaac was just still in a time of mourning. You know, he didn't want to go anywhere. He didn't want to do anything. He'd lost his mom and um, it really shook him. And so I think Isaac was just, you know, too upset to go anywhere. He didn't want to go anywhere. And also, I think back in those days, um, you that was not unless, you know, you got married and you were in the same area, parents arranged everything or, or someone was sent to arrange these things. I mean, even now, you know, we have matchmaker. Um, and so matchmakers would arrange this or parents would arrange this. And oftentimes, unless they lived in the same city, they, you know, bride and groom didn't even know each other. They, they were always alliances. These were to help the family. So, you know, it was maybe mom and dad's friend, or maybe it was a, a person that had more money or more power. And so they were working out some kind of deal. It wasn't about love. It was about keeping the family safe or prospering the family. So I think even in those days, Isaac just, it, it wasn't the custom for him to go anyway. That's good. Just that thought pattern. Uh, as it continues on, uh, this saga, uh, Genesis twenty four twenty four. So she said to him, I am the daughter of Bethuel, Milcah's son, whom she bore to Nahor. Keep that, keep that thought, Nahor, because uh, she was Isaac's cousin. All right. So you see a little bit of the uh, genealogical line. So she's Isaac's cousin. Now, I know some of you are like, that's creepy. That's yeah. like, you know, backcountry stuff going on. That's what they did. You know, they would literally marry first cousins. Um, that was just the process of the time. I know that is frowned upon in our day and season because of, you know, handicaps can come out. We've got DNA crossing and things of that sort. Uh, we're thinking about at that time, more pure, spread out, mm -hmm. all of those things. But yes. Um, this lady is in Isaac's family, first cousin, Nahor, all of that in the family of Abraham, which is planned out by God. Hmm. This Genesis 24 and 25. Moreover, she said to him, we have both straw and feed enough and room to lodge. I just wanted to really focus in on her character even further. Just how she talks. She just seems like a delightful young lady. Ooh, ooh, ooh. You know, um, you know, as my kids are growing up and they go out and they interact with different people, I just love when they bring delightful people, well-mannered, um, you know, that could speak well. Um, there have been some that, you know, weren't as well-mannered. And I'm just, it kind of made you wonder, not putting them down, but someone, Rebecca is able to carry her own. Uh, she's able to communicate and think. She is, this shows she, she has the smarts, you know, she has the ability to do that. So I just, I just love her with her, the, the words that we get to read, uh, the vibrance of, mm -hmm. of who she is. Genesis 24 and 26. Then the man bowed down his head and worshiped the Lord. All right. Uh, even for if you're in your group sitting uh, with your friend, your husband, or wife, let's talk about this. What does this show? This is the servant. He had this prayer. God is answering, because it is. He is answering this prayer. And Rebecca says these things. You know, we got straw, and I'm a part of your family. And this servant is just, it's just a walk of faith. It's like, bam, revelation, bam, revelation. And then he just worships. What do we learn, B? Um, uh, the power of God. I mean, I'm sure that Rebecca was not the only woman here. So, you know, I don't know how big the city was. I don't know how big the town was. But if, even if there were five women, for him to wind up talking to the one who is, you know, who is actually part of Abraham's family, I mean, that's a miracle. I mean, I think about all the people in Greensboro um, we've been to some places we've gone, you know, gone outside of Greensboro and met people and been like, yeah, I'm from Greensboro or I know so and so from Greensboro. And, you know, we're always amazed at how that happens. And so he's gone to this faraway place. And as you said, made this specific prayer to God and and every piece of it was answered, I think. And so, yeah, I think he was just so taken aback. I mean, I know he had faith because he prayed, but. He was just so taken aback that God answered so completely and so immediately. I think he just fell down in worship. <laughs> and I think this is a message to us. How many prayers has God answered for you 
and um, think about how many times you really thanked him. I'm not saying just making it to church. I think we need to worship before church. Um, that we just need to take time in our day when we see God answer prayers, when we see God show up and show out right then and right there, um, whether it be in the grocery store, uh, in our cars, um, just when it comes over us that we can see the hand of God. Some of you have had miracle after miracle, and I encourage you, just give God some praise and some thanks. Even now, you can stop. You can push pause, <laughs> come back to this later, yeah. and just take a time of worship and just bowing down because he has done so much. Um, for those who have been married a good little bit and you know your spouse uh, came from the Lord, you should thank God. You should worship the Lord for that because it could have been another way. And so these processes are big as we see in this servant of Abraham. And I keep telling, saying that because I do want to emphasize his servanthood of following through a request of Abraham. Abraham didn't come. He sent his servant. and But yet we still see the faith of Abraham. It's almost as if Abraham is here. That's like we're looking at our backdrop again, that Abraham's journey, because it is all a part centered about uh, God making him a father of many nations. Mm -hmm. uh, this Genesis 24, 27, it reads, it says, And he said, Blessed be the Lord God of my master Abraham, who has not forsaken his mercy and is true towards my master. As for me, being on the way, the Lord led me to the house of my master's brethren. Mm -hmm. Again, even in the language here, his worship is of the God of Abraham. He never says, my God. And I want to transition just briefly to the New Testament. Those who are saved, we who are saved, he is our God. And he is able to worship a God of Abraham. We get to worship our God mm -hmm. that has sent his son Jesus Christ for us and uh, put his Holy Spirit. Isn't that some exciting news? Yeah, somebody always just shout and say hallelujah. We can worship him. And, and there's some words that he says, who has not forsaken his mercy. Anybody experience that? And it's true towards my master. So he's thanking God what he did for Abraham and how it's spilling over in this specific answering of prayers. And it says, the Lord led me right to the house of my uh, master's brethren. And I, I, I just love that because it's not by mistake. I think about my life and, you know, some of the paths that I were on and, and God just deviated me, got me to a different place. And, um, you know, sometimes I was like, why? But as I get older, I'm like, God, you were so wonderful. You got me right where I needed to be. As I get older, even as uh, Bianca and I, we talk to people, and uh, you know, a lot of times now we're at that age where we can say, "Who's your mama?" Ooh. Or you know, <laughs> yeah. who, "Who's your daddy's people?" Your and people? we could we could link ooh, ooh, with. Ooh. I mean, just I would say ninety six percent of the people that we talk to or are strangers now are connected with somebody else that we know, and I'm just like, "Wow, God, you are amazing!" Just because of the paths that we've been able to crossover within our lives. Uh, look at this Genesis 24 and 28. So the young woman ran and told her mother's household these things. All right. So uh, run. If you're on chat, just put run. If you're just sitting around, just say run, run. This this girl been running. Uh, every, I mean, <laughs> she's, she's run. She's a pitcher, and she's been feed, she's been uh, feeding the camels and drink of the camels. All of these things. She ran out to the place. She's running back. <laughs> this, she has good cardiovascular health, and uh, she's gonna make a wonderful mother uh, to Isaac, yeah, wife Rebecca and mother uh, to uh, and, and this is this is God is working all this out. She's not a sickly lady. And I just, I just find this interesting how God is able to connect all of these things together. But there's a part that I don't want you to miss. She's also a commodity, not in a bad thing. It just means that to her family that this master is going to, to talk to about getting Rebecca as a wife for Isaac, she is important to the family. She does a lot for the family. Um, she has connected with so many, so there is going to be some tension. I'm, I'm kind of looking ahead. There's going to mm. be some tension later. Uh, let's get this next section of scripture and we'll kind of uh, wind it up for today. Now Rebecca had a brother whose name was Laban, and Laban ran out to meet the man by the well. 
So it came to pass, when he saw the nose ring and the bracelets on his sister's wrists, and when he heard the words of his sister Rebekah, saying, Thus the man spoke to me, that he went to the man. And there he stood by the camels at the well, and he said, Come in, O blessed of the Lord. Why do you stand outside? For I have prepared the house and a place for the camels. All right, so entourage comes. Keep your eye on Laban. Right. Um, if you study the scriptures, Laban has a lot of backstory um, that, that, that comes up. But uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about that a little later. But Laban, um, just looking at all of this stuff, I think it has uh, a kind of, I don't know, it, it puts a picture of maybe where his mindset is. Mm. And he thinking, okay, Rebecca, what can we get out of Rebecca <laughs> in this situation? But God can even supersede selfish thoughts you know um, of people trying to uh, really maybe deviate the plan of the Lord mm. a little bit on this from what is revealed about his character chapter 29 there is reason to believe that his sight of all the presents and the camels generated the welcome mm. well as we we stop here for the day I wanted to just kind of leave you with the thought pattern God is able Mm -hmm. And God is faithful, and God is merciful, and God is gracious. He answers prayers. He answered the prayers of the servant of Abraham also. Mm -hmm. uh, he answers our prayers. I think our challenge is to recognize those answers and be in a thanksgiving, a spirit of thanksgiving, and, and as we looked at the scripture of worship. Bianca, mm -hmm. any final thoughts? Mm -hmm. Just like you said, to look for those miracles, look for those blessings. Understand that um, your life is not by chance. And there's so many things that God lines up. And if you look for it, you can see that. You can see where you turn this way. And you don't even know why you turn this way. And God somehow worked it out. And um, so just look through your life. Some people are depressed because of where they wound up or whatever. But there are places where God kept you from things being a whole lot worse, for things being as well as they are. And if you look those look for those things, you can see that blessing and you can glorify God even in your situation. Amen. Let's pray together. Father, thank you for this lesson. Um, forgive us for our sins. There have been so many times we haven't worshiped, we haven't thanked you for answered prayer. Forgive us for that. Help us to be more aware um, to live in a state of thanksgiving to you. I thank you for being a faithful father, Lord. Mm -hmm. And I pray for those who have not accepted you yet, that today be their day, that they will confess with their mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in their heart that, Father, you're raised from the dead, and you said they would be saved. Let them know us by grace through faith and not of themselves. It is a gift from you. Oh, that they receive that gift. Now, Lord, as we go through our day, as we talked about strangers, help us to be cognizant, aware of those that are around us. That if you speak, Lord, we can reach out to them and encourage them. Yes. You are an amazing God. Thank In you. Jesus' name, amen. amen. Well, thank you so much for hanging out with us. And again, as you go through your day, your week, look for the miracles and the answered prayers that God is doing every hour. Until we meet again, shalom, shalom. shalom.